Christmas Eve murder mystery. The slaying of a shirts businessman is still unsolved four years later. Okay, so hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'll be talking about the curious case of Henry Gutierrez. I probably said that's horribly wrong, but Henry was a multimillionaire, ladies man, and a race car driver. Uh, and also an owner of a trash collection business. Henry was 73 when he died in his chair by a gunshot in the head, chest, and leg on Christmas Eve 2015, and nobody knows what happened. This is the mysterious case of Henry Gutierrez. Henry lived in the sh in Schertz, New York, which has been ranked as one of the best places to live in the United States. Despite his millions, Henry didn't show his wealth. If you looked at him, you would think he was, wasn't a multimillionaire. He got his money from his trash collecting business, which was started by his mother, where she would go to house to house, asking to pick up their garbage for $2.50 a month. Henry took over the company after his father died and later sold it. Then he started up another trash business, partying with, partying with his old friend Ephraim Gonzalez in the early 90s then sold the business in 1987. The company sold for about six or seven million dollars. Henry devoted his energy to drag racing and his other hobby woman. Garbage collecting must have been in his DNA because he started a third trash collecting business with his uncle George. Henry says uncle, Henry's uncle says that the company ran about 55 trucks every day. Henry once again made another agreement with Ephraim not as partners but for Ephraim to provide equipment and maintenance for the company. Henry also was a good person that did good deeds, such as bringing presents to the police and fire department employees. But it all came to an end a couple years ago. Henry and his uncle were going to sell their company to a multi-billion dollar company. On the meeting day at 9 a.m., Henry didn't show up, so George called Henry's son Miguel, the company's VP. According to Miguel, it is weird that he didn't show up to a very important meeting. So Miguel rushed to his dad's house. He looked through a glass pane and saw Miguel saw his father in a chair with a blanket over him. George said all he could see were his boots and his shell casing on the floor. Henry was dead in an execution style death. Miguel was out of breath when speaking to the 911 operator. And with the blanket, if you normally would put a blanket over somebody's head, they would try to fight it to get it off, honestly, with everybody. If you try it, they will try to fight it off. If you don't believe me, go to the person closest to you and try to put a blanket over their head. They will try to fight it off. So that means when Henry was dead, when the blank Henry was dead when the blanket was put over his head, according to a detective on this case. Henry's car and a ring his family said he always wore was gone. The crime scene photo showed that somebody messed up the entire place. The only thing they found in the house that didn't lead to Henry was one unknown fingerprint. Henry's car was found months later, miles away in San Marcos. The cops also were not able to get any evidence from the car, but what cops did discover was other items missing from Henry's house, like gift cards. There were five gift cards, and three were taken. Those gift cards were what Henry gave out as Christmas gifts. The unusual part about this is that the gift about the gift cards is that if you t if you were to take some gift cards, you would probably take all the gift cards instead of just a couple. Cops say a man that has been roughly drawn is possibly a transient. And that is probably a transient that sold the card, the gift cards, to three unsuspecting people in Houston. The card in one city, gift cards in another city. All the evidence was in the location, in different locations, for the identity of the person, except for the identity of the person who ended Henry's life. Henry was killed for money or something with the business, the cops think. Cops also think that Henry was killed by somebody that Henry knew. Police also think that the scene was made to look like a robbery instead of an intentional death or homicide. And to add to this case, there was a phone call to Uncle George saying that 
they knew who killed Ken Henry. The police then backlogged the phone call, and it led to a convenience store in Houston. P police weren't able to develop anybody or anything from that call. The people of interest are Miguel and his sister, because they had a will change, even though they may not have benefited directly from it. According to police, Miguel is being corrupt, 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 I don't know how to speak, cooperative. Miguel also said that they had changed the will to his uncle, Chris Miguel, named Chris. Miguel also told his dad that he was thankful for him doing that. Cops also investigated Henry's girlfriend, girlfriends, which were suspiciously all out of town. At, and at this time, police believed there was no connection to the people that got this stolen gift cards case. No, there was no connection to the people that got the stolen gift cards to the case. They also say that the person that gave away the gift cards most likely didn't go to the house and steal them. They have... They have also n never found the guy that gave away the gift cards, and all those things went nowhere. So could Henry's killing be related to business? Another person of interest is Henry's old friend, Efren Gonzalez Sr. The reason Efren is a person of interest beca is, because the, that, is because that the police haven't gotten the chance to speak with him, and he wants to speak with him because they want, he want Efren Gonzalez wants the police to speak with his attorneys. Efren Jr., his son, has been cooperative, according to police. Police also said that because he was in a business dispute with Henry, that makes him a person of interest also because there was a lot of money to gain one way or the other. Remember that agreement for equipment and maintenance between Efren and Henry? Efren claimed that he was entitled to half of the proceeds of the sale of bear waste the third company that Henry made, which I didn't say. Um, Efren used sued Henry and the company that bought Bear Ways to many back payments for equipment and to share the proceeds. They then settled out of court. After Henry died, Efren got control of the land leading up to Henry's home, which was part of a civil lawsuit. Efren also owns the driveway to Henry's home. Efren's daughter said that they don't know anything about Henry's death, saying they have no involvement with that, but they loved Henry and, they, and that he was a family to them. Efren, Efren Jr., and Miguel are still persons of in, people of interest, persons of interest, but not suspects. And that's the case of Henry Gutierrez. I still can't say that name. Whew! That was a crazy story. If anything happens, if they find the killer, whatever, I will make a part two of this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Twitter. Join my Discord, link in the description. And what? go to my podcast. And I'll see you guys in the next video.